Republicans and two Democrats, two blue dog Democrats, mm -hmm. uh, recently voted to forestall Biden's ability to forgive student debt. In fact, that uh, that bill called for repayment of student debt that was on moratorium. I'm not sure how that would work, but um, here is uh, Texas Republican Representative Burgess Owens in the House Education Committee. This was a couple of days ago. Um, talking on the Biden student loan policies. Reminder, that is with the Supreme Court. And um, how it's quite likely the Supreme Court will strike it down. How they do it may, um, may give us a clue as to what Biden does next. Yeah. Because he has one more arrow in his quiver. There are different legal theories depending on how the Supreme Court rules. But uh, but we will talk about that in a moment. Here's Burgess Owens. Discriminated against. I think it's, it's important to recognize that we need to get innovators to the table. It concerns me very much to hear that Debt Collective is sitting at the front table with you guys. These well, are pause it for one second. He's, he's attacking Debt Collective. Uh, which is a uh, activist group. Yeah, Astra Taylor we've had on the show a number of Multiple times. times, yes. I think it's, it's important to recognize that we need to get innovators to the table. It concerns me very much to hear that Debt Collective is sitting at the front table with you guys. These are people that are about free education, free homes, free health care, free credit, uh, credit card cancellation, um, uh, Basically, the concepts of what Marxism comes down to free everything, and they hate the entrepreneur. And yet, they're sitting at your table in your front row talking about how to destroy this particular industry. Well, this, this I think it's time for us to really, and this is a good time for us. I think that the pandemic has kind of pulled back the curtains. We have parents now that are asking those questions about return on investment. We have, we have uh, young, young people now looking at what industry they need to get into to truly make a living and have hope. And I'm hoping that oversight like this will allow us to start moving forward in the right direction. Uh, I'm excited about the fact that we do have a chance to have oversight in this, in this, in this regard. And, um, and we're, gonna, we're gonna make sure in everything we can do to get the innovators to the table. We need to disrupt the system, not break it. We need to make sure that the people can enter this process, whatever they might do, might want to do, and feel they can come out of the other end more hopeful and more successful. Okay, so <clears throat> so that's key there because well, one hilarious that they're going after the debt collect collective. They must be doing something right. And we know that they are. But when he says there, you know, we need to disrupt the process. What the Republican angle on this is going to be less people going to college, more advancement in other areas like trade schools or, you know, non-college degree advancement. That's the line that they're going to push. But, you know, I, I, like, sure, that's a good thing, too. And if people want to get into that, that's good. But college education and that kind of uh, that kind of education should be seen as a human right because you have an opportunity to go into the humanities to expand your mind education and educating the population doesn't need to have a cost benefit analysis where you go into the workforce and that's the only funnel that education should be although that's what republicans think um it should be for the advancement of humanity and for growing your mind and making you a more informed citizen and human being and they see j debt jubilee as a threat to uh to their central project of making education as threadbare as possible to force people into economic situations or jobs that they may not want to actually be a part of yeah. and just as a correction we should say Bur burgess owens i'm sorry is is from utah not texas Isn't oh. He a texas? Uh, oh and so i apologize for that that's my, that's i'm getting corrected on the i am but um yeah and the idea of like we're going to bring in innovators to figure out how to put you in greater debt like what is the innovation here we know what it is it is the government is loaning money out of profit incidentally uh to people so that we can have an educated populace if you are wealthy and rich you don't got to go into debt we and, and and let's be clear here we offer the wealthy already 
a benefit for college. Mm -hmm. We offer them something, that, and that is you can put your money into a tax-protected fund called a 529 account, and it accrues profit that you don't have to pay tax on. And if you put, if you, if you're rich and you have a hundred thousand dollars, your kid's born, you put that money into a tax, uh, you know, free account and you let it sit there and it's invested by the States actually you have these like, um, apparatus and you're going to, at the end of the day, you're going to get a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of profit. Maybe a hundred thousand, one hundred fifty. I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, I, I mean, it depends on, I guess, how the market does at that time, and it's all going to be tax free, and that is only available to rich people, because everybody. And I don't mean just it's not available to low income people. It's only available to the top ten, twenty percent of the population, in any meaningful way. I mean. It's available theoretically to everybody, but when you have the amount of uh, people that we're talking about who don't have the ability to like even, I don't know, pay a thousand dollars in their savings, um, it's only available to a select few in this country and they have the ability to grow the money and that is denying society tax taxes that would otherwise be collected on that money. And nobody has a problem with that. No. There's no moral hazard associated with that. It's only associated with uh, loans that are taken, that are really necessary, A, for society, but B, for the individuals to compete economically. It's often done with, um, with low, with, with, Low-income people or people who are uh, who are discriminated and have been traditionally discriminated in the workforce. So you get a lot of like, frankly, a, a black women who go into for-profit universities because they're hitting a glass ceiling and they think that they need uh, a degree to get further. Or I should say. They think that the degree that they get will help them move forward. Which is what we've been told for decades as a society, yeah. that college is a mode of, of uh, upward... Mo uh, Capitalism is fine. Invest in your own mind. These for-profit universities basically get 90% of their revenue from the federal government in the form of student loans. A lot of people don't graduate from these for-profit universities. A lot of times these for-profit universities don't end up giving the economic boost that um, their students uh, anticipated would come from there, and they're stuck with all this debt. We can do two things. We can basically outlaw for-profit universities unless that they show evidence that there is a return on their investment that, uh, in their product. And then we can also give everybody an opportunity in their state to go to a free university or maybe, you know, two options so that it's, you know, depending on the size of the state. So you can actually attend. And instead, we're subsidizing wealthy people to not have to take loans or to take diminished loans. That's what the, that's the way we have structured this. Make no mistake about it. That's the way we've structured it. You either go into huge hawk, or if you're wealthy enough, we're going to give you a discount. Yep. On, it's on it's not just that wealthy people, it's not enough of a benefit that wealthy people can pay for college and they don't have to have debt or have limited debt for the kids when they come out of it. They also have, get to have this tax exempt uh, fund and the people that try to get a college education to be on the same level as the people that already had an advantage will be saddled with up to hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Like the gulf between those two people and the advantages ascribed to them is completely psychotic. It make it is it's it's already an advantage to be wealthy in this country. And then this is just such a compounding compounding ridiculous saddling for people. And it's to it's to keep a certain class 
in line. It's to it's to subjugate education for the, to service entrepreneurs or he doesn't he wants he doesn't want to say capitalists, but that's what it is. And the thing that is like generally, I think that is really offensive and uh, pathologically brainless as a so- society to say like the only reason to go to college is to how you serve a guy who's going to make money um, with money. But the 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 real thing is like it's not even going to innovators like if we did student loan forgiveness that money which is now going to bankers would be going into the local economy into like the trades people that the blue dogs say they really care about and want and we can't do any student loan debt thing until we take care of the trades there's also another element to this it's not just about commodifying education it is also about disempowering workers in the workforce if i have this huge debt that i've got to pay off I actually have less bargaining power. Yep. I will end up getting lower wages yep. because my desperation will lead me to take something that where any income is coming in. If I don't have that huge debt, I can decide to go into teaching. Exactly. I can, go, I, I can decide to go into areas where, uh, into social work, or I can decide like, I'm going to wait until I get my worth in the marketplace because I don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I don't have this debt that's crushing me.